estamos con Claxo TV en las oficinas de David Van Zandt, presidente de la New School en Nueva York. Las universidades y los centros universitarios tienen presidente. To be a president, for example, in, in the United States, but in general, to be a president of the states means to have a vision. Which is your vision about uh, the new school? Well, the new school, it, my vision for the new school is that we are, are very much looking forward into the future, um, looking for ways to solve social problems creatively and innovatively. The new school's history has always been part of that. It was created as a non-traditional university with people challenging the status quo, being very socially engaged, and we intend to continue that on. Which are the social challenges now for you, or in general in the society? Uh, well, the, we have challenges, of course, uh, at all different levels. We have challenges locally here, and we work very hard with the city of New York to try to, to, try to make things better for its, its citizens. We obviously have challenges at the state level, and of course the, our federal government has lots of, lots of challenges um, that, that we, we try to help with. Those challenges are linked with the crisis? With the financial crisis? Yes. You know, I think the financial crisis has um, simply just made them more apparent, brought them out. I think they were always there, underlying challenges. The challenges include things like the inequality in income that, that's been growing, and the financial crisis just, you know, just made that clear. I think the lack of savings for, um, you know, for future generations or for, for the retiring uh, group of people right now in the United States, that's a major, major problem we have. The increasing of inequality is a product or uh, it is a political decision? You know, I think these things are always a little bit of both. I think the main driver, though, and this is throughout the world, is globalization and uh, the increase in technology. I think individual countries, by different policy decisions, can have an effect either to dampen that or to increase it. And what about the new school uh, in respect that issues? What are you're doing, you are researching, you are intervening, you are uh, uh, increasing your incidence in politics. Well, our, our role really is to, um, to research, research those issues, also be um, uh, a, a forum for discussing those issues and bringing them out. We don't have a lot of straight political influence to change. And that really is something that's the, the responsibility of our governments, uh, and that's true throughout the world. Which is a correlation It's correlative the level of the problems with the level of reflection in the United States in general, of intellectual reflection. Huh. I, you know, I think I think United States, like I think it's true in many countries, but there's a range of reflection. I think that uh, the New School tries very hard to have at the highest level, critical level of thinking about things. Unfortunately, that doesn't necessarily seep down through the entire entire society. And in that uh, case, the form is to uh, identificate problems as new problems or we have uh, that old problem that we know them uh, very well? Yeah. I, you know, I think most of the problems that we deal with today uh, and maybe the new school has dealt with are, are known problems. I think the new school's advantage is its different take it, it brings to them, its different perspective it brings to them. The new school has always been about critical thinking and critical analysis, uh, and you know, so it means that we often take a position that's a contrarian position. It's not what other people generally think. Why are you so involved in uh, Latin American uh, issues, especially in Argentinian issues? Uh, well, I'm fascinated by Argenti uh, Argentina. I love it. I, it. My prior job, I visited uh, often to Argentina, to Buenos Aires. Um, and I also, you know, I'm also very much interested in, in political economy and watching what happens in Argentina, same way I like to watch what happens in the rest of the world. Finally, the New School itself has a long uh, legacy of being involved in Argentina. We're very proud of many of our graduates who've worked in the Argentine government and nonprofits uh, and NGOs in Argentina. So there are many reasons that I'm interested in Argentina. One of the reasons are the fellowships of Nestor Kirchner. That's sort of, that's been one of the more recent uh, recent reasons that that's uh, gotten me down to Buenos Aires. Um, is that fellowship? Uh, it just uh, it's just one more step in or one more uh, episode in the in the New School's involvement with Argentina. Besides the New School, yes, you are personally a specialist in uh, international economics. 
What's your way of thinking about the vulture funds, that issue now? Uh, about, I'm sorry. What was about the vulture funds and hedge funds and the vulture oh. funds. Oh, you're, you're drawing me into a, a, a big political issue. I know what's going on right now, and, and I know I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, actually trained as a lawyer, so uh, I, you know, I do try to follow those cases. Um, I think it's a very difficult case for the United States. I think it's very important for um, the rules, you know, the terms of contracts to be followed. On the other hand, I also think it's very important for governments to take into consideration the impact of those on their people. There is no easy answer, in my view, to that problem. The not easy answer, but the answer or, or the biggest answer or the most important answer has to do with the right of states to restructure the debts in the future. That's one viewpoint. I don't take a position on that personally myself. Yeah. Okay. Which is the challenge in international politics, in international finance, sorry, mm -hmm. international finance. You uh, talk about the globalization. Mm -hmm. Okay. What are the new phenomena that are increasing uh, in the world in respect to globalization? In terms of finance? Yes. Um, well, you know, I think the, 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 the capital movements within the world ebb and flow up and down. I think we've gone through a, we went through a long period where there were lots of capital controls on movements. I think we went through a, li a period of liberalization where they were taken off. And now I think we're finding um, more countries are going back to some forms of capital controls uh, in order to avoid rapid influxes of money going in and out. In the economic literature, there are lots, I mean, it's a debate, but um, I think there's lots of evidence that uh, rapid movement of hot money or of short-term capital, I think that's probably a better term, can have deleterious effects that can be softened or can be muted um, through the appropriate policy position. On the other hand, having capital controls in place for a long time um, is not very good in, in the long run for a, co for a country. There's a debate also in uh, international forums about the um, heavens, the fiscal heavens. What's your opinion on that? About the paradise, the, par the fiscal paradises. Fiscal paradise, I'm not quite, I'm sure I'm familiar with fiscal paradise. You, oh, you mean havens. Uh, taxes. Havens, yes. Ah, sorry, sorry, my, my mistake. Um, you know, I think we're finally realizing that uh, there are tax havens not only on small islands in different parts of the world, but also in the major in the major economies, whether it's the United States uh, or in parts of uh, the EU. Uh, I think at the end of the day that uh, I, you know, I do believe there should be competition in taxes, so we shouldn't have a uniform tax rate across the world. Countries should be able to compete on that. On the other hand, when countries do things that attract um, uh, dirty money of various kinds, whether it's from drug dealing or I think a major issue we have today is, is uh, uh, politicians pulling money out of their own country that they've essentially stolen and putting it into uh, protected tax havens. And that's not a good thing. And I, I do applaud the moves of the OECD and, and, and the various countries involved to put an end to that. Which is the importance of the China process, the internal China process and the economic process of China here in terms of uh, as an issue for the new school? Well, we have an India-China Institute where we're trying to study the relationship, both both those two economies as well as the relationship in, in between the, their economies and societies. Um, you know, we at the new school, we see China in a whole range of different areas. We see it as a place of, of you know, a, an emerging economy coming out and growing. We see it as a, uh, um, we're very interested in design. And that's one of the facets of the new school. And China is a, going to be a booming area for new designs and new ideas uh, coming forward. Uh, you know, we're also concerned about the geopolitical aspects of China and some of the disputes that are going on right now. Mm -hmm. Which is your perception about the CISO's perceptions? Uh, China as a problem, China as a difficult, China as a barrier, or China as a positive challenge? Oh, I think, I think. China's a positive challenge. Uh, I, you know, I think we have to, the United States and other countries have to work with China long term. And there are always going to be frictions, as there are, say, between the U.S. and Argentine relationships. So there are always going to be frictions, but I think we need to work, work together for it. I think China long term, I think China for the United States is, uh, you know, it, it, buys our, um, it buys our debt. 
you know, it holds a lot of our debt. Uh, it um, has been the engine recently for the growth of the international economy. And without China, I think we would be in a worse, worse position than we currently are. On the other hand, there's certainly things about China that we don't like as much. Okay, Mr. Van Sant, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Uh, my pleasure. Yeah. David Van Sant, presidente de la New School in Nueva York, con Claxo TV.